Here we have a little snippet from Emperor's We Must Dance School Tour, where they visited three schools back in February as part of their initiative to reach the youth through dance. They began the second phase just yesterday, visiting Goodwood and Speyside High Schools, and this morning they're off to Scarborough, Mason Hall, and Signal Hill Secondary Schools. We have with us this morning via Zoom founder Venerick Cupid to update us on the second phase of the tour. Good morning to you, Mr. Cupid. Good morning, good morning. Thank you for having me this morning. Not a problem. How are you doing today? I'm fine and I'm excited to do this day two. So, you know, everything is perfect right now. Fantastic. Now, I mean, I want to get a recap of, of how it went in February. First of all, uh, how was the experience? What did you guys learn? Uh, what, what was the, the, the students' reactions to the dance in school? February, that on February, we had our first tour. That was day one that we did. Um, three schools, you know, we did Mason Hall, we did Signal Hill, we did Speyside, and honestly, the entire experience was extremely humbling. Um, very rarely, I think, as practitioners, we end up in a position where we could teach the next generation and have such interest coming from the next generation regarding any sort of art form, any sort of subject. And we had literally scores of students rushing, coming up on stage, they want to participate, and not just the female students, but the male students, seeing that it was an all-male cast, visiting them, speaking with them, dancing in front of them, showing them dance moves. And that really set off signals to everybody on the tour that they, more of this is needed, more outreach programs, mm -hmm. education doesn't necessarily have to be something through books. It could be a physical learning experience, true experience, and that is something that um, pushes Everybody on this tour today to make sure that we give it our 100 this morning. Is that also part of the reason why we have five schools uh, added to the list now? <laughs> um, yes. And the funny thing about that is um, when the video from the first, um, from the one day tour dropped, um, different schools saw it and reached out to us and said, yo, um, you left us out and Goodwood. <laughs> and I need to mention Goodwood. Um, the teacher from Goodwood, Miss Dominique, she was the first person to actually um, start with it. She was like, how could you all leave out good word, good word? Students would appreciate this sort of initiative so much. We have young people dancing on TikTok every day in school. So please include us in the second phase. And that is why we, we moved from three to nearly double, which is five. So thank God for that. Yeah, man. I'm loving the responses as well. Uh, tell me, in terms of breaking down what happens at these sessions, right? I noticed that there was some with stick fighting. They had some with uh, what looked like dancehall dancing, what looked like some ballet dancing. I saw a whole wide, nice variety of different styles of dance. Break down what happens to me at these sessions. So um, at each session, we actually sat down in a think tank and was thinking about the best way to sort of engage and educate the students within a very short space in due to it was only a one day tour in February. And what we realized that um, mm -hmm. most of the students and them sort of shied away or didn't really gravitate too much to some of our folk dances or traditional folk dances up front. But if it's something that they were eased into, we find that the reception was a lot better. So we okay. would have started by giving them trendy and familiar dance trends and moves that they would know. And when it is that they were hooked, then we would have bring in, then, sorry, then, then we brought in like the stick fighting and brought in some of the, the folk um, later. And they were, so, they were so much enjoying that they didn't even realize, okay, I'm learning this art form. I'm learning this culture. So it was a, it was a, a different educational tactic to yeah. sort of reach them on their level and get them to where we want them to be. You catch them with the honey, and then you get them the information ah. along the way. <laughs> nice. Well exactly played. That. Now, of course, this, this uh, is leading into International Day of Dance, which is on the 29th of April. We have more phases in this tour still? Um, after the 29th of April, we will be engaging them further um, because we are a little bit sensitive with this semester because we know that the schools and them have exams for CXC. Yeah. But in the January, sorry, in the September semester, when we have that new intake of students, we will continue to find ways to keep them interested and keep them learning because dance does, just doesn't have to be dance. We can teach them a lot of life lessons and principles using the art form and not especially since the students are so much interested in it so um it doesn't just have to be that sort of 
uh, we come once a semester and we go and that's it. It could definitely be something that is continuous. It could be something that is educational year round, and it's something that we could use as a tool to mold them going forward. And our next and something that we could do later on here could be a competition, something to really have them study, something to have to have them practice to have them build a camaraderie with other schools with other students. So that is our next phase that we are cutter, that we are currently considering right now. Fantastic. Tell me some of the life lessons that can be learned through dance. Oh my God, I love this question, right? <laughs> uh, I must say I love this question. So at a very early age, and I didn't, I didn't appreciate the wisdom at the point in time because I was young. At a very early age, um, in Monk St. George, where I lived, we had ballroom up at our community center. And I was a young man, you know, I was like eight years old, nine years old, a little timid, a little afraid. And my parents would push me into ballroom. And ballroom... Um, while learning the principles and the disciplines of ballroom, I realized that they were teaching me how to be brave. They were teaching me how to be respectful. They were teaching me how to approach a young lady. They were teaching me how to extend an invitation. They were teaching me how to react when the invitation was accepted or denied. They, mm. they, was teaching, they had so many principles that ballroom um, by itself taught me. They were teaching me how to lead. And... That sort of respect when it comes to dance and it comes to ballroom, um, it, it stayed with me from that young age. Even though I didn't like it at first, I realized that, okay, as a young man, it's just I need to approach a female for her hand in a dance. I need to present myself in a kind of way. I need to present myself in a kind of posture, my mannerism. And these are some of the things that we are seeing currently in society that most young men not really aware of. And, and, and I think everybody could sort of agree with that, that you're not really seeing that sort of finesse um, when it comes to engaging each other uh, in society, whether it's as a young man or as a young lady, because it teaches um, a young lady similar traits. It teaches a young lady how to be elegant, how to, how, how to compose herself, how to receive an invitation, how to vet a young man. So, you know, in case the young man doesn't approach you properly, doesn't extend his hand properly, how to vet him. So there's so many, and now, that Venerick, is just ballroom alone. Venerick, I had, to, I had to interrupt you here because that sounds absolutely amazing, but that's ballroom dancing, right? Correct. I, I'm not sure, and you, you could let me know, because I'm not sure how many youth are willingly participating in ballroom dancing. You just said that you didn't even willingly do it. Your parents had to force you into it. <laughs> so when you, when you approach these schools and the children are more interested in doing the drift, or doing whatever other dances are available, do they still learn these same um, characteristics or these same traits? Yeah, um, yes, because at, at every school that we went to, we start with something, um, just as you said, the drift, right? But one of our folk dances and that we have is the Mariku that, that has a very similar, similar feel to ballroom. It isn't exactly the same, but it has that same male-to-female ratio, male-to-female right. dynamic, male-to-female interaction. And that is something that I would have learned um, at a point in time when I was doing folk for Tobago Opening Festival, and it reminded me of that ballroom approach. It reminded me of that ballroom um, energy, that ballroom sort of vibe. Nice. So it is something that um, we just have to... Add, and I just use ballroom as one of the examples. So there's so many different lessons in almost every style of dancing. In the real and jig, it have it. In dance all, it have it. Dance all and hip-hop may not necessarily be as deep, but we learn disciplines in almost everything we do in life. And I'm, I'm really glad that dance is one of those um, avenues that we are able to use to sort of connect and interact and engage with the younger generation. Because we don't want it to be that there's a disconnect and they feel like we cannot um, communicate with them on no sort of level. Yeah. And I appreciate that you're mindful enough to know that there's a balance that's necessary. So thank you for the work that you're yes. doing. Please keep it up. I wish you all the best today. I know thank the phase you. two is continuing and we look forward to seeing more from Emperors. Thank you so much. And, oh, and allow me to please mention my sponsors real quickly. I would like to mention Save the Isle and Foggy in Just Tobago Carnival with our partner, the Division of Tourism. Thank you to everybody who is currently supporting us and wishing us the best. We are going to change the trajectory in Tobago, and then Trinidad and Tobago. So thank you. All right, Venric, take care. Thanks. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, Venric Cupid, the founder of Emperor's Dance Crew, as they continue their dance tour. Phase two is happening, and uh, it's going to be phenomenal, just like phase one was. We take that quick break and come back with your birthday shouts next on the Now Morning Show. Stay tuned.